This news program is proudly brought to you by Paradise Foods, celebrating 90 years in PNG. PSP reports growing revenue of 2.05 billion kina in the third quarter. Alarming rate of underage drinking, a concern. And United Nations Day, celebrated in Port Moresby. Good evening, this is National MTV News. I'm Malcolm Waira. Thank you for joining us. Living up to its reputation for being the leading bank in Papua New Guinea and the South Pacific, BSP Financial Group recorded banking with more people, corporates and governments, and financial institutions. This was presented by the Bank of South Pacific Financial Group Chief Executive Officer, Mark Robinson. So on PGX. Elaborating on the results of the bank's third quarter report for this year, CEO Robinson emphasized on the increased number of engagements in digital transactions. BSP recorded around a baffling 16.3 million transactions on the digital platform in a month. Our digital transactions are ones that we're particularly uh, proud of. Uh, the 16.3 million mobile and online transactions per month was the average in, uh, in Q3, and that is a, uh, that's growing uh, at an annual rate of over 8%. Uh, over 8 so in further interest to gaining more customers, adding to the opening of local branches for convenience, the CEO expressed that the bank encourages digital engagements from all its customers. Uh, we are doing all we can clearly to facilitate and encourage uh, and welcome our customers to interacting with us through, uh, through digital channels and uh, we're pleased with the progress uh, that we're making there. BSB notes having around 3.5 million customer accounts and 125 branches in the country, making it a dominant bank in Papua New Guinea. CEO Robinson expressed that the bank had faced challenges in the previous months due to subdued markets but said the bank has maintained a strong balance sheet despite given its profitability in the country. Mentioning a top-line growth of around 11% from its third quarter report from last year, Robinson ensured that the bank will see more growth moving forward, especially with its advancement in technology. We're in a great position. This has been, a, to be blunt, somewhat of a year of transition uh, in a number of different uh, areas, particularly, uh, particularly technology, but we've come out the other side and I think the platform is incredibly strong. The financial group CEO made these remarks during the presentation of BSP's third quarter results to its investors yesterday in Port Moresby. BSP reported maintaining its growth momentum with a revenue growing by 6.7% to 2.5 billion kina for the nine months to September of this year. Natasha Ovoy National, MTV News. Member for Nawai District in Morobe Province, Theo Pelgen, says all funds from Nawai District for projects and programs must be properly acquitted for. MP Pelgen has acknowledged 37 Nawai District students attending the University of Goroka for the acquittal presented back to the district. The students were funded in June this year upon special circumstances affecting their accommodation status whilst attending the institution at Goroka. The 50,000 kina funding from Nawai District towards supporting their accommodation was acquitted back to the district during their closing function in Goroka last week. Now IDDA members, church and youth representative Mr. Eric Mantown, and Mr. Jimmy Amati represented the MP, Tio Pelgen, during the occasion to receive the report. MP Pelgen said that this is true character of leadership shown by the students to show clearly how the funds were spent and distributed according to its purpose. This program, the MP said, will give a clear understanding to the locals back home to appreciate development agendas, the government is working towards benefiting them all in this term of government. 
Amanda Elaitia, National MTV News. The minimum drinking age in the country is 18 years. However, it is alarming to note incidences in the public of underage drinking and violence. Sharing sentiments on this concern was SP Brewery's Corporate Affairs Manager, John Nilkare, who said not enough is being done to address these issues. Although the legal age for drinking in Papua New Guinea is 18, it is still unclear how well this is policed. This is the statement Annie will be slapped with when searching online for the country's legal drinking age. As this still remains a concern, there is a correlation between escalating violence in school and the prevalence of cheap alcohol in PNG, mostly sold by shops that escape paying taxes to the government. Mr. Nilkare expressed that not much has been done in this regard to address such issues. We're really, really concerned that this is something that's been able to prevail, that's been able to operate um, very obscenely with impunity. Uh, we've, on many occasions, we've, we've um, let's say, we've uh, engaged with uh, law enforcement agencies, PNG Customs, all the government authorities that are supposed to address this issue. Um, I think they haven't done a good enough job. There's more to be done um, because the, the further we sweep this uh, under, the, under the carpet, he mentioned in a survey done by the brewery, the government loses an estimated 100 million in Kina through the selling of illicit alcohol by manufacturers that escape paying taxes, money in which that enables government services. Not paying their taxes, companies that are not doing the right thing in PNG shouldn't be able to operate. I mean, it's as simple as that. And they're doing it in plain broad daylight in all of the stores. Uh, that range alcohol. This had also resulted in beer sold in shops becoming unaffordable as registered manufacturers of liquor are being burdened with tax. This further encourages alcohol consumers to go cheap than legal, endangering themselves in the process as illicit alcohol is unregulated and poses a greater threat. Mr. Neil Kare appealed to the government and responsible authorities to step up and address the issue. So, you know, I encourage our leaders, our regulators, um, our legislators to do more. I mean, the, the, people, the people deserve, deserve to you know, live in a peaceful, just society where everyone plays by the rules. Natasha Voy National, MTV News. Noting that alcohol is to some extent part of PNG's lifestyle and that SP Brewery is a company that advocates for responsible consumption of alcohol, Corporate Affairs Manager John Nilkare encouraged young people to consume alcohol responsibly. So we always advocate responsible consumption because we believe that, you know, um, beer is also part of a healthy and balanced lifestyle when consumed in moderation. So my, my, my appeal to young people is if you're going to consume beer, just consume it responsibly in moderation. Um, and, and don't overdo it. Don't, don't binge drink. There's nothing cool about binge drinking because that only results in problems. Representatives from United Nations organizations in the country celebrated the UN Day today at the Gordon's Market in the nation's capital. The day is an opportunity to draw attention to urgent international issues and local issues. Stalls and representatives were out to raise awareness on their respective organizations' work. This year, in commemoration of the day, each United Nations agency have set up information booths to speak about their respective roles and responsibilities they provide and also provide relative services and conduct activities to engage the general public. Richard Howard, UN resident coordinator in the country, told the gathering crowd to visit each booth to learn more on what each agency does. I'll be telling you a little bit about that in a moment. Uh, but I just want to tell you we're here to support you. We want you to know a little bit about what we do. So this is the day. UNICEF colleagues in the back. Very good agency there, UNICEF. But they're all part of the UN, okay? So I just want to give you a brief introduction. That's who we are. Talk about condoms and safer sex over there in the back. Condomize, a UNFPA program with UNAIDS is here. So we'll get also present was UN Women Country Representative Jackie Katunuti. 
Katunuti went on to address the women and mothers that were doing marketing about what UN women do in addressing women and girls issues in the country. I think uh, the United Nations have been working here since 2019, um, four or five years ago already. And it is such an example where market contributes to the space of gender equality, women economic empowerment, uh, addressing gender-based violence in the community, improving income, security and safety. Uh, last but not least, we would like to actually see women in the informal economy access to finance services in, uh, increase their income. Tamara Agavi, National MTV News. National MTV News continues after the break with more stories. Stay with us. You're watching National MTV News. The Permanent Parliamentary Committee on Law and Order has begun its consultations for the Momase region yesterday at the Lay Forestry Institute. The committee met with community leaders from settlements within Lay City, ward councillors from Morabe province, who had aired their views on growing unemployment issues, forcing youths to turn to criminal activities. Local leaders appealed to the committee members to enforce tougher laws on offenders and gave suggestions to get youth involved in agricultural activities. The public consultations have been prompted by the growing law and order issues in the country. Hence, the committee is on a fact-finding mission to establish the root causes, make recommendations, and present its report to Parliament once it concludes its travel to the four regions over the next few months. The committee was led by Coroba Lake Copiago Open MP William Bando, his deputy Pomio MP Elias Kapavore, and member Robert Nagori and Morobe Governor Luther Wenge. Chairman Bando said all stakeholders are encouraged to give their views. The consultations will continue through to Friday, 27th of October. The Highlands Regional Consultations will then take place from October 30th to November 3rd, 2023. Amanda Ilaitia, National MTV News. 53 computers were donated to several divisions of the Royal PNG Constabulary in the NCD command by New Net PNG yesterday at the Boroko Police Station in Port Moresby. New Net PNG, a PNG-owned education technology startup company, has donated 53 computers which will be distributed among several divisions of police in NCD command, including the Family and Sexual Violence Units, the Office of the Metropolitan Superintendent, CID Homicide, OOLA CID, and the Cybercrime Division. It is my absolute pleasure to be here today to hand over these computers to the RPNGC on behalf of Lighthouse International and UNET. The CEO of UNET, David Valentine, when presenting the computers said, it is free of charge. He added, they will also provide training when requested. Metropolitan Superintendent Silva Sika was pleased with the donation and said this is the first of its kind. A company had donated that amount of computers free of charge. He added the donation was timely when police officers need computers to work to produce results. He urged the officers to operate the computers with care. Louis Mangu, National MTV News. The NCDC Active City Development Program, in collaboration with the French Embassy and Friends of Pom Gen, will be hosting the 2023 Active City Pinktober Run this Saturday, November 28, 2023. The Pinktober Run is more than just a charity run. It's a powerful platform for raising awareness about breast cancer and supporting cancer treatment in the city. Throughout October, Port Mosby turns pink, aligning with the global breast cancer awareness movement. The event aims to promote preventive health, inspire behavioral change, and encourage fitness and wellness among individuals and communities. This year, the organizers aim to raise 70,000 kina minimum, enough to provide a year's worth of treatment for 50 women battling breast cancer. 
The funds will be directed towards purchasing essential medications for breast cancer treatment. The seven kilometer run will start at 5 a.m. at Sir Hubert Murray Stadium, heading to Apex House and finishing back at the stadium. During the groundbreaking ceremony recently of a Women's Agriculture Resource Center in Dauro, Eastern Highlands Province, National Agriculture Research Institute Director Dr. Nelson Simbiken revealed that a lot of emphasis is yet to be made for women to transform the agriculture sector in the country. The event coincided with the launching of the Gotopo Women's Business Group and the presentation of mushroom training certificates from Junkau Technology and BSP Financial Literacy Certificates to a total of 96 women. This was all done under the leadership of Ms. Tala Gotaa, as chair lady of a group of eight women's group in Daulo and Goroka district of Eastern Islands province. Ms. Tala, after noticing the need to assist women in the local communities to be registered and engage in economic agricultural activities, she began assisting women's group to look for market opportunities to sell their produce and engage with NGOs, technical trainings with the Janko technology and other activities to enhance their skills. The group specializes in mushroom and honey production. Ms. Gotaa also challenged the local DDA to support the group through its agriculture component of the budget to economically boost and support the established group in line with the government's agriculture policy and thanked partners and stakeholders for their support towards the group. National Agriculture Research Institute Director Dr. Nelson Simbiken said, Nari is looking forward to partnering with the Gotopo Women's Business Group by providing the resources needed to operate at its resource center in Asaro, Daulo District in the Eastern Islands Province. Louis Maingu, National MTV News. On the eve of celebrating 50 years of a milestone providing aviation services to the country this year, New Guinea and its board recently appointed a chairman for the board management team. The National Executive Council made the appointment on 20th September 2023 after the death of late Sir Costas Constantino. Mr. Yalo was initially appointed by NEC as board director on 4th May 2022 for a term of three years. He holds a law degree from the University of Papua New Guinea and has a wealth of experience in various sectors, including aviation, mining, and project management. His wealth of experience and expertise will help guide Air New Guinea to deliver positive returns whilst achieving key milestones in accordance with its strategic plan. Under the same NEC decision was the reappointment of Lady Avu Tauvasa, Mr. Anthony Sito, as well as the new appointment of Mr. Boni Igime as board director. Embracing the belief that it is never too late to learn, as one is still breathing, 180 participants yesterday received certificates upon their completion in Christian adult literacy in the Seventh-day Adventist Church. It is noted that about 37% of the adult population in Papua New Guinea are illiterate in 2023. Hence the importance of adult literacy in the country and the significance of this graduation. The Adult Literacy Program for the Northeast District Churches of the Seventh-day Adventist Church, facilitated by the Central Papua Conference, has progressively picked up from the year 2020 to 2023. What started with 11 churches having schools increased in 2021 to 13 during the COVID-19 era. In 2022, the program increased to involve 17 churches. By this year, 26 churches have adult literacy schools in the district. A noted 21 of these churches have active schools. Nine are organized and 11 are from branch churches. From the 21 active schools, 18 schools graduated learners and teachers yesterday. A total of 130 adults, 34 of which were male and 136 were females. The participants were noted to be from various denominations as well. 
the program taught basics in reading, writing, understanding, and enabled self-help. The participants were also taught basics in baking, cooking, sewing, and carpentry. The program is mainly carried out in lamb shelters and under pastors' houses or even under the trees. Challenges of this program included no desks or chairs for the students to sit and write, so learners had to sit on the ground or floor. And the teachers, voluntary, committed their time to teach two to four days a week. The church hopes to further carry out such programs moving forward. Natasha Ovoy National, MTV News. Now we take a look at the Nest Fund Market Report. The kina closed unchanged at 0 0.2695 US dollars in the interbank market. At Bank South Pacific, your kina was buying 0 0.2620 US dollars, 0.4124 Australian dollars, 0 0.2400 Euro, 38.94 Japanese yen. Looking at the commodity prices, at New York closed, gold is trading lower, coffee closed higher, cocoa closed higher, copper closed lower, palm oil closed higher, Crude oil is trading lower, copper closed lower. On the stock market, the Dow Jones closed lower, the ASX 200 is trading lower, the All Ordinaries is trading lower. National MTV News continues after the break. Stay with us. Tokai Sports. Welcome to Tokai Sports. In local rugby competition, the Morobe Rugby Union carried out its grand finals last weekend. A thriller was the match between the Royals and the ESS 10th City Lights as the Royals put a stop to a back to back premiership run by the ESS 10th City Lights. Royals denied ESS City Lights to win 16 to 13 points in extra time after scores were tied 13 all at full time. Royals looked to be the better side from the start with the opening try by winger Jamal Labi, converted by fullback James Anton to lead 7-0. The flame was ignited by Royals putting City Lights to the test in their own half for a good first quarter of the first half. The City Lights of 10th City knew it was now or never retaliating with a mightier quest to level scores at 7 all courtesy with a converted try to hooker Joshua Moto. In the A-grade division, East Taraka Vikings claimed a back premiership, defeating the Royals 12-0. In the women, Harley Queens claimed the championship's title for 2023 against Royals. Natasha Avoy, Chukai Sports. And in netball, the PNG Peppers continue to outshine in Singapore in the Merxus Nations Cup 2023. Full time in yesterday's match found PNG Peppers 52 to Canada 34 points. Merxus Nations Cup 2023 will continue competitions to the 28th of October this year. Chukai Sports continues after the break. Stay with us. Chukai Sports. This weather update is proudly brought to you by MoniPlus. With you always. The weather report for the next 24 hours for the southern region, Port Mosby City mostly fine, Daru partly sunny, Karama brief showers by evening, Alotau mostly fine and partly cloudy, Popondeta partly cloudy with few evening showers. To the Momasa region, Lay City partly cloudy with brief showers, Medeng partly sunny with possible evening shower or two, Wiwek partly cloudy with few showers, Vanimo cloudy with few showers. To the New Guinea Islands region, Lorengau, cloudy with some rain showers and possible thunderstorms. Kaveng, partly cloudy with brief showers and possible thunderstorms. Kokopan Rabaul, cloudy with few showers and thunderstorms. Kimbe, few showers and thunderstorms by evening. 
Buka, rain showers and thunderstorms. To the highlands region, Mount Hagen City, mostly fine. Goroka and Kundiawa, mostly fine, partly cloudy with possible evening drizzles. Mendi and Wabeg, mostly fine, partly cloudy. The weather update was proudly brought to you by Money Plus. With you always. And that wraps up the news, sports and weather for Tuesday, the 24th of October, 2023. From all of us here, pleasant viewing. Good night. This news program was proudly brought to you by Paradise Foods, celebrating 90 years in PNG.